Okay, so we're ready to start the demo. Today's demo will take you from nothing, from zero, up to working WordPress on a Kubernetes cluster uh, in Alibaba Cloud. We'll be following along with this example here from Kubernetes.io, uh, deploying WordPress and MySQL with persistent volumes. For those who don't know, a persistent volume, or PV, in Kubernetes is basically a storage that's part of your Kubernetes cluster that has been uh, provisioned for you either manually by an administrator or by the cluster itself and exists independent of your pods and your deployments. So even if your deployment or your pod goes away and gets deleted, the storage still persists, hence the name persistent volume. Any application that needs to keep state will usually have persistent volume so that it has somewhere safe to store information about the application. Okay, so the first thing we need to do from the Alibaba Cloud console is go up to this uh, orange button in the upper left, mouse over products, and then type in the word Kubernetes. I'll then go to container service for Kubernetes. Okay, we're here in the clusters view, and I need to create a new Kubernetes cluster. There are many types. We want this one here at the bottom right, standard serverless cluster. When I click on create, I get this creation page here. I will call it wp-cluster. I will create it in Singapore. We'll put it in Singapore zone A. Uh, we'll use Kubernetes 1.16, and we will choose to create a new VPC group for the cluster. A VPC group is a private network group on Alibaba Cloud. This is where the nodes for our, for our Kubernetes cluster are going to live. It's how they'll communicate with each other. Uh, and then I'm going to create a NAT gateway uh, for that VPC so that, uh, so that our pods and our nodes can talk to the internet if they need to. And I'll turn on private zone, which will allow services inside of our VPC to be discovered by their domain names. This is a private DNS service. And I'll also check this box to create a Alibaba Cloud log store service, where we can collect all kinds of logs about our cluster and perform text-based search and create alarms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, let's agree to the terms of service, and then we'll click on Create Cluster. This will run some pre-checks to make sure we can create the cluster, and it will inform us how we're going to be billed for the services we're using. Uh, looks like we will be billed separately for NAT Gateway and Log Service. Okay, I'll click OK. That will start creating the cluster. There's a log here um, showing that the cluster is taken create, being created. It takes about one minute. Um, so while the cluster is initializing, in order for us to use PVs or persistent volumes, we actually need to go allocate some disk space on Alibaba Cloud. So what, I, what we use for persistent volumes on Alibaba Cloud usually is ECS disks. So an ECS Cloud disk, whoops, let me open that as a new tab, can be accessed by a Kubernetes cluster on Alibaba Cloud. So if I go over to the ECS console, and then I go to storage and disks, uh, I can create some new disks here in Singapore uh, in zone A, which is where my cluster is, and then we'll be able to add those disks to the cluster. So I'm going to create one disk for MySQL and one for WordPress. So I'll choose zone C in Singapore. I will choose a 20 gigabyte size. That should be enough for this demo. Uh, the first disk, I'll call it WP-disk. I'll click preview, create. That will create my disk for me. I'll now go back to the console and I'll do the same thing to create a MySQL disk. So I'll click Create Disk. Again, uh, Singapore, Zone A. Only 20 gigabytes. Um, and we'll call it MySQL disk. And actually, you can see all the features of a regular cloud disk are available here. For instance, you can turn on disk encryption. Uh, you can enable disk backup to make regular snapshots of your disk. So, so Kubernetes service on Alibaba can benefit from a lot of the features that ECS benefits from. I'll check again the terms of service, and now we'll click Preview and Create to go ahead and create our MySQL disk. And then we'll go back to the console. Okay, uh, if I refresh, I should now see in a moment that I have two on a test volumes. It might take a little while for the second volume to show up. You can see that it's here. So I have two uh, unattached volumes, one called MySQL disk and one called WP. Both of them are 20 gigabytes. Uh, let's see how our cluster is doing. Okay, so our cluster is still initializing. While we wait for that, let me take a look at the tutorial here and explain to you what things we're going to have to change. So the first thing we need to do is download the deployment uh, YAML files for MySQL and for WordPress. 
we will not need to edit anything in these files, but we will have to remove some sections from them because we'll be setting some things up by hand that would normally be set up automatically. So let me go ahead and go to Downloads. I'll go to MySQL uh, Deployments.yaml. I will go to WordPress Deployment.yaml, and I'll open these up. And you'll see that each of these YAML files has three sections. Uh, each of them creates a service, which if you remember from the PowerPoint is how we make the application on our pods accessible to users. Each of them creates what is called a persistent volume claim, which allows the pods in the deployment to say, hey, this storage on this PV belongs to me. Uh, and then there is a deployment here at the bottom, which actually sets up the application. And uh, what's going to happen is we'll be creating the PVs and PV claims by hand, so we won't be using this middle section uh, when we actually deploy on Alibaba Cloud. And down here, there's also a requirement on, on a secret key. So we need to have a value, uh, uh, we need to have a, a key called MySQL Pass, that, uh, we need to have a, a secret called MySQL Pass with a key password in it defined in our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, you would normally do that through what is called a customization.yaml file, uh, but we don't have one of those on our serverless cluster, so we will be setting this up by hand from the secrets version, uh, uh, the secrets console inside of our serverless Kubernetes cluster. We'll do that in just a moment. Same thing here, uh, it def the, the MySQL deployment defines a service, a PV claim, and a deployment. Just like before, we'll do the PV claim manually, and then later I'll show you how to do the service and deployment uh, part uh, using the Alibaba Cloud Console. So let's go back. Our cluster is now running, and we can now set up our persistent volumes and that secret that I talked about. If I go down to configuration here, there's a section called secrets. This is where I can put my, um, my secret information. You can ignore those error messages. The cluster is in fact running. Um, that's, that's just a, a temporary error that should go away in a little bit. Okay, great. You can see there's no error now. Uh, I think that was just I needed to refresh the console. So I'll click Create. And again, we'll go back and look at the YAML file. Our secret is called MySQL-Pass. So that's what I'll put in as the name. I need to add some keys and values. The key is password. The value is, well, we need to choose a password. Let's make it longer. So I'll choose a 20 character randomly generated password as our database password, and I'll click OK. And that will go ahead and create our secret for us. Now that we've done that, we can go create our persistent volumes. So I need to click on Create here to create those. Um, so you can select either NAS, Object Storage Service, or Cloud Disk as your PV type. Um, and you can use multiple different plugins to talk to your volume. We'll just use the default flex volume. I need to select a disk. You can see here two disks in zone A. Let's figure out which one was the uh, WP disk. Uh, so it looks like 4N1. So 4N1 here is the WP disk. We'll put that in first. And then we'll go over to persistent volume claims and we'll create a PV claim. And we need to make sure the name of the PV claim for our WordPress disk matches the one that's in the WordPress deployment.yaml file, uh, which is WP PV claim. So I'll put that in, uh, and then I'll select from my existing persistent volumes. You can see the one we just added here, this disk 4N1. I'll select that, and I'll hit create, and that will create my persistent volume claim for me. I then go back to persistent volumes, and I'll add the other disk, which is our MySQL disk. Select, okay. Then I can go back to persistent volume claims and create a PV claim for my MySQL deployment. And again, I need to make sure that the name of that matches the, the name from the metadata section here in the persistent volume claim. So I'll make sure that I put it in as MySQL-PV-claim. Um, and then I need to select a volume. There it is, I click Select, and I hit Create. So we've now set up our secret, which is our MySQL database password. We've set up two volumes, one for MySQL and one for WordPress, and we've set up the volume claims that our deployments, or rather that our pods in our deployments, will use to talk to those two disks. So we've got our disks, we've got them mapped as PVs inside of our cluster, and we've created claims that will let our deployments talk to them. So now, we can actually start setting up our deployments and our services. So the very first thing we need to do is set up the WordPress deployment. That needs to happen first 
because the, or excuse me, the MySQL deployment uh, needs to be set up first because WordPress depends on that deployment. Um, so under deployments, I'll click on create from template. I will choose the type as custom. I'll make sure I'm in my WP cluster, default namespace. And in this template area, I will take the MySQL deployment and copy paste the entire thing in. And then I will remove the persistent volume claim section and those three dashes at the top. And so now there's only two sections, the service and the deployment itself. Um, so now I should be able to click create and that will start the creation of the deployment and its accompanying service. If I now click back on deployments here, I can see a list of my deployments. I can see WordPress MySQL. If I click on details, I can see the status of that deployment. You can see the deployment under events, you can see that we've created the deployment and scaled up to one replica. And under pods, I can see that the pods container is being created. If I want, I can go look at the details of that pod. And I can see that there's a MySQL 5.6 container starting serving requests on port 3306, which is the default MySQL port. If I go to events, I can see the MySQL image is being pulled. And once the container starts running, I should be able to see some logs here. So you can see that the, the container is now starting up uh, and I can refresh that if I want so that I can see log information as it comes in. You can see MySQL D ready for connections. So it looks like this container is running. If I go back to deployments and uh, click on my WordPress MySQL deployment, I can see that that MySQL deployment is now, the pod in my deployment is now running successfully. And there's only one pod here. I could have more if I wanted, but I'd only have one. All right, so the next thing to do is create another deployment, uh, this time using the WordPress uh, deployment YAML file. So again, I'll click on Create from Template. I'll choose Custom. I'll go back to the file I got from Kubernetes.io uh, called WordPress Deployment. I'll copy paste the whole thing into the Alibaba Cloud console, and then I will remove the PV claim but I will leave the deployment section and the service section. And then I will go ahead and click on create. And that should go ahead and create the WordPress deployment and the associated service. Actually, I never showed you that part, but under ingresses and load balancers, there should now be two services, one called WordPress.MySQL and one called WordPress. And you can see that the WordPress service, if you look at the YAML file, the service is of type load balancer. What that does is that causes Alibaba Cloud to automatically set up a public uh, load balancer with a public IP address uh, so that incoming requests uh, to this public IP can be served back to the uh, pods in the WordPress deployment inside of our cluster. And you can see that external endpoint here. And if we go back to deployments, we should be able to see whether or not our new WordPress deployment has started successfully. We can see that it shows that it's running. Um, we can see that it has scaled up to one replica. If I go into the pod, I can see how far the pod has gotten along in its setup process. It's, the container has been created and started. WordPress image has been called or uh, pulled, and we've created we've mounted all of our volumes successfully. If I look at the logs, uh, it looks like Apache is now running. So what this all means is we've now successfully set up WordPress and run it on our cluster. And it's a serverless cluster. I didn't have to create any nodes. I didn't have to manage the master. And I even was able to do all of the secret and disk management through the GUI. I didn't have to use the kubectl command. So now if I want, I can go back to services and I can click here and that will open a new tab and I'll be able to see whether or not WordPress is running. And there it is, there's the WordPress config page. And just to prove to you that, that WordPress really is working properly now and, and running well, uh, what I'm going to do is open up the Alibaba Cloud DNS console, we'll map a domain name onto that public IP. I'll use chinasite.xyz here. Uh, and then we'll go actually configure the web page and make a post. So I'll take this public IP here. Oops, sorry, it's a little bit difficult to copy paste that. And I'll create two DNS records. Uh, one will be a wildcard pointing to that public IP. And the other one will be www pointing again to the load balancer public IP for my Kubernetes cluster. All right, so great, I've completed my DNS setup. I can click Enable to enable those DNS records. 
Uh, we can go ahead and try it. I'm not sure how long it will take those records to propagate. It might work already. We'll give it a shot. Okay, it did work. I'll choose English as the language. Um, we will set up a site title as cool WordPress site. I'm sorry, I know that's super lame, but I can't think of anything better at the moment. I'll choose a password and we'll save it into a file here. Um, email, I'll just use my company email. I actually don't need to set this part, um, but I'll, I, I will. And then I'll click on install WordPress. Uh, that should complete the WordPress app uh, installation for me. I can then log in as the administrator using my admin username and password. And then I can create a post. And we'll, we'll, we'll log in, create a post, um, publish the post, and then we'll go back to the WordPress homepage and see if everything is working. So we will add a new post called first post 1111 in great internet style for take off every zig for great justice. Sorry. A bad, bad video game reference. All right, and then I will publish. And then let's go ahead and log out. And we'll go back to the chinasite.xyz homepage. And you can see the default WordPress theme. And first post is here at the top. So everything worked. That's it. We've now set up WordPress on top of a serverless Alibaba Cloud Kubernetes cluster. Thank you for joining the demo.